Hey guys, so today I got my Matic F7 board and this is all you get as part of the package. It comes with the vibration dampeners, it comes with a 470 microfarad 35 volt capacitor, a non-conductive plate which you can place on your flight controller and you can put tiny components like your a receiver or your small VTX on top of it and it will not short with the flight controller. So this is a fantastic package. I tried to find uh, reviews of this board online and I just found a couple of them. I think Powell did one uh, recently on his channel but again he did not really talk too much into depth and neither am I because this is like just any other flight controller all-in-one flight controller I must say because you can, you don't need a separate PDB to connect to your ESCs so that's really good and I like to fly with individual ESCs and that's why this is going to be really helpful where you can connect your uh, ESCs to the board directly uh, I think there is an option on this to even use a four in one ESC where you have these pads here that's that's really great if anybody wants to do that now quick uh, high level overview of the board uh, it is it takes up to 8s battery it has black box capability it comes with an SD card no I'm just joking uh, this SD card is mine uh, it comes with a barometer here this small component and yep you can use it to show the altitude uh, on your OSD uh, well of course it comes with an F7 a light version I believe not the actual F7 so what's really exciting about this board are these pins here VBAT, ground, C1 and C2 you might be thinking well most boards have the VBAT and ground pins but these pins are internally controlled by a switch which other boards do not allow so basically with the flip of a switch you can allow power to go through these pads which is the VBAT and with the flip of a switch again you can turn it off so what basically it means is you can connect your VTX and you can turn it on whenever you want to so if you are on a field and there are people flying around you can still plug in your battery to the quad and the VTX won't turn on by default you just need to flip a switch and then the VTX turns on so that is a fantastic option I need to try that and that's what I'm going to do today and the other one is the C1 and C2 so this is for two cameras so if you are into building a cheater quad where you have one FPV camera looking in the front one FPV camera looking at the back and with the flip of a switch you can go in either direction then this is a perfect board for you or if you are into 3D flying for that matter so today what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in uh, my VTX and two cameras to this board and test this board out. I want to see how the uh, latency is for switching between the cameras because that's what it really matters when you're flying. If it takes a little too long to switch between the cameras, you might really find it difficult to fly. And I, of course, when you're flying, you're not going to switch uh, off the VBAT. So the, that's really not a concern of mine. So let's go ahead and connect the VTX and the two cameras here and let's see how it works. Okay, so my connections are now done. This is my camera one. This is my camera two. I know all the wiring looks like a mess, uh, but I'll tell you what the connections are. This is my, the VTX here is connected to the VTX pins and uh, it can be controlled via a switch on your uh, transmitter I also have my transmitter ready here and so here you see the power cables for both the cameras 5 volts and next to that are the ground pins I'm not sure if it's clear enough that's right over here and then there is C1 which is camera 1 video signal and then the C2 which is camera 2 video signal so that's the whole setup I'll also show a image on how I set it up in Betaflight basically there is a user 1 and user 2 mode now when the user 1 mode is activated that's when the VTX is powered on and uh, 
the user 2 mode is which, which controls the two cameras. So I'll just show the image on how it is set up on my uh, quad and you should get a and you should get some idea about how it works. Now let's test it out. As you can see I have a big number one right in front of camera one and a big number two right in front of camera number two. So now when I uh, turn on the quad, when I plug in the battery in my quad, you should not see anything because the VTX is turned off by default. So here is my transmitter. So I have configured this particular switch for everything. So this is the default position where the VTX is turned off. The middle, this is a three position switch. So when I come in the middle awesome. here, just ignore the buzzer sound. So when I come in the middle here, uh, the VTX is turned on and camera one is active. When I go at the bottom here, again, Please ignore the modes or the please ignore the sounds uh, when I come to the last switch here uh, VTX is still powered on but the camera is now switched to the second camera so what I'm going to test now is how good the latency is when I switch between when I switch between the two cameras and how is the VTX power and how the VTX uh, powers off and on using the switch so let's go ahead and start Alright, I am recording my DVR right now and I am going to plug in the battery. My switches are in the default position which is here. So yeah, so it's at the bottom most position which means the VTX is turned off and uh, after the battery is plugged in, I will switch to the different cameras. So let's go ahead and do that. Let me plug in the battery. All right, so right now you can see the flight controller is turned on. The DVR for a second showed the image, uh, which I'm not really happy. The VTX2 turned on for a second. That's not a good thing, but let's go ahead and flip the switches. So the, when I bring this here, the VTX should turn on and you should see image one. There you go. You see image one that's here. That's image one. So there was a little bit of latency, but I think that should be okay. What I'm really going to try is how good the latency is when I switch to the other camera, which is camera two, which I'm going to do right Turtle now. Mode. And this is really quick. Mode. This is my two here. This is Buzzer. really good. The camera switching is absolutely fantastic. Really, really Buzzer. fast. And if I go back and try to turn off the VTX, there you go, VTX is turned off. Yeah, so I think there's a slight delay when you turn on the VTX, which I guess it's okay because when you're flying, you're not going to turn off the VTX. All you're going to do is switch between the cameras. And you can see how fast it really is. So, I am really very happy with the fact that the camera switching has so low latency. Let me plug. So low latency. The only issue I see is when I plug in the battery, when I plug in the battery, I see the VTX turned on for a second, which is not really good, which is not really as advertised uh, on their website. Because if it turns on even for a second, there are chances that you might bring some other pilot who's already in air down on the ground. So that's really not good. I hope they bring a firmware update on this. I don't even know if that is possible, but if it happens, great. If not, we'll have to live with it. That's all for now, folks. Uh, if you have any questions on any other part of this board or any other functionality, if you want me to test it out, let me know in the comments section and I will do that. Thank you so much. Have a good one.